Hello, welcome back. It's the Clay Golem here. We're back in Foundry VTT and we are in our test world where we have a play with stuff um, and don't hopefully not mess up our actual playing environment. I'm going to look at a mod today um, and we're looking at wall height. Uh, so it's at the bottom here. It's just called wall height. And as you can see, it has two dependencies, the lib wrapper, which a lot of things rely on, and also the Ripper 93's module hub. Um, I don't want to disable those. I want those on board. Um, so what does wall height actually do? Well, it allows us to define the height of walls. <laughs> it's kind of in the title, isn't it? <laughs> so first of all, let's have a look at some of the settings we have for wall height here. Um, so um, enable the tooltip. I'm going to say yes, because that's useful for just showing you what there is, but you can turn that off. Uh, display the height display the height on walls. Again, we're going to leave that on for this purposes. Um, allow vaulting. Now, the way that this works, um, the, the whole add-on works, is you can define the height of a wall. So you can say, actually, it's a, it's a, a short wall around a field. It's three feet high. Um, anybody who is taller than three feet can see over the wall. Anybody who's shorter than three feet cannot see over the wall. With the vaulting, what it says is actually, if you are taller than the wall, you can move straight over the wall without too much drama by effectively vaulting over it. Uh, it doesn't seem to take into account or, um, any kind of movement speed. So it doesn't say, well, hang on a minute, that's going to cost you t double movement because it's effectively rough terrain. Um, but that's okay. You know, it'd be, that's a nice little detail. It'd be good to have, but but that's okay. We don't need that. Um, but anybody who's under that height, under three foot, they just can't pass that wall at all. Um, not without then doing climb checks or whatever it might be. But by default, they're blocked. So that's quite useful. Uh, automatic token height means it will calculate um, the height of tokens for you. Um, I've had a little play with it. I'm not sure that's what I want to use at all. Um, instead of automatic token height, we can define a default token height. Now I've decided to that to use six, um, six foot, and I know that's you know tall, um, but I've decided that basically anything of medium size, so um, humans, your elves, um, half orc, etc., are all going to be effectively six foot equivalent of. I'm not going to have walls that are five and a half foot and six and a half foot. They're either going to be short walls or high walls that's that's pretty much the way i would use it i'm not going to use too many variations in there so basically it's either a wall a six foot person can see over or they can't that's pretty much where it'll be um token height multiplier i'm not really sure what this does i mean it multiplies the automatic token height by this value um, we're not using automatic token height um, so we can kind of ignore that but i guess that is if it's calculating it for you uh, and i'm not sure what it calculates based on i did have a little play and it just gave me some weird numbers um, it didn't seem to be related to the the race. Now, when I looked it up in the um, in the wiki for it, it said it was um, calculated based on the size of the token and everything else. Um, I would rather that was linked to the you know for players anyway. It was linked to their race. If you're playing a halfling, you're not going to be as tall as an elf. Simple as that. But it's not, and that's perfectly okay as long as we know we can work with that. Um, enable globally, uh, sorry, enable constrained by elevation globally. So you can probably just about read that. Area of effect sources um, will be constrained by walls corresponding to the elevation of the source instead of the elevation of the controlled token. So if a six foot tall wizard casts fireball, it should go over a three foot wall. Um, if you've got um, if you've got a halfling wizard casting fireball, it's going to be blocked by a six foot wall. That's that's what it's suggesting how that should work. Um, and this last one here is just about migrating wall height data on startup. Uh, so it says migrates wall height data from the old wall height data structure to the new one. It's not relevant to us because we don't have an old structure for it. Uh, so there's not many options here. Um, this is the defaults I'm going with. Happy with those. Um, let's draw a wall. Because <laughs> it's all about walls. Uh, I've chosen Old Owl Well because this is a ruin. Um, 
with the idea of this this tower being pretty much intact at the ground floor but look it's surrounded by these little ones and I was thinking where might I actually want to use this and Old Owl Well was one of the few places I thought oh that might be relevant so I'm just going to draw a wall in here okay that's just a plain normal wall and if I let me select all of them go do all of these together uh, and click on these we see we've got all of our normal options but at the bottom we've got a couple of other choices um, such as the wall height the top of it and the bottom of it so at the moment it's set to infinity so basically that wall will block anything regardless of its elevation regardless how tall it is etc it's just going to block um, but we can define how high that wall is so I can say that that is a uh, let's say that's a five foot wall now the bottom wall at minus infinity means it goes all the way down okay so we can uh, just leave that as it is so this is now a five foot wall if we update that because we've got that other thing on um, it's actually telling us it's five foot to minus infinity and again we can see just hovering over it that tool tip the top is five the bottom is infinite okay so we have a wall that is of a different height whoopee do what next well let's put some players or some characters on the board here so let's chuck out Haley and Ronbar the poor chap whose name I couldn't remember last time okay so let's double right click Haley um, and now in here we have um, a we have that elevation but we now have that token height now you can see this says computed token height is six line of sight elevation six so that's using that default to say Haley is effectively six foot tall so we can leave Haley as she is now if we look at Rombar who I made a uh, gnome I believe it is also defaulting to say that he's six foot tall but he, he's not is he I'm gonna put three foot in just for this um, purposes so I've made him significantly shorter now immediately you saw this gray bit come here that shows he can't Haley you can see uh, and he can't let's chuck a zombie over there and you're thinking you didn't do it <laughs> uh, but I did <laughs> I've chucked a zombie over there right let's move to the play of you okay just to make this slightly easier which I very conveniently have over here uh, so this is the play of you now logged in as a player if I'm logged in as Haley I can move around um, and I can go over that wall now if I'm playing Rombar I cannot see over that wall I cannot see the zombie and you might hear me clicking my arrow key I'm trying to walk over that wall it won't allow me and in fact because this wall is all the way round poor Ronbar who's a shorty has to go all the way round to be able to do that now that doesn't mean that the DM can't ask for a climb check or whatever they want to do for him to be able to scale it but by default he can't get over that wall because he's a short ass <laughs> whereas Haley, being a much more sensible size um, she has all those options she can see over it she can cast over it she can shoot over it but she can also just clamber over it now remember that was that setting that being able to move over it was that vaulting setting that we could turn off and just say no she can see over it but she can't automatically climb over it that's a no-no uh, and again that's totally up to you as the dm how you want that to work um, I think that's really nifty now the question you probably need to ask yourself is are small creatures halflings gnomes etc are they punished enough <laughs> because they they do have some other disadvantages I know halflings get other advantages by being small um, but do you want to disadvantage them even more by doing this uh, that's up to you of course it is you make your call uh, I just thought this was a nifty little way of doing it and uh, it could bring a fair bit of humor as every, all the rest of the players are teasing the short characters <laughs> Okay, so something else I want to try that I haven't tried yet is I want to um, chuck another zombie out and put them over here. I want to draw another wall over on this side. Um, let's pop it in. No, draw wall, please. Uh, just pop it in over here. Now I'm going to do something different with this one. I'm going to select 
select all each of those walls. So I'm going to change all of them together. Hello, thank you. Okay, double click to open it up. So I'm select. I've got them all selected. It's going to change all of these. Now, what if I say the wall height of this is infinite, but the bottom of the wall is five? So this is now more like a bridge, isn't it? Yeah. So there's a gap underneath that's five foot high, and above five foot, it's just wall to infinite above. So it might be like a cave entrance or something. Let's let's call it four. Okay. So with that done, okay, so it's infinitely high, but it starts from four foot off the ground. What happens now, if I go back to the players, let's bring these guys in. What happens when Haley walks over here? She cannot see that zombie because, oh, she can pass it though, so she can crawl under. Okay, that's interesting. But she can't see the zombie because her eye line is higher than the gap. Although, because of the vaulting, she can effectively duck under it and crawl under it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, what about this little dude who is shorter? He can see under it automatically. He doesn't need to duck and, of course, he can move under it too. So, there's two different ways we can use it. So, yeah, we might be punishing short characters by having walls just slightly too high for them to see over, but we can do it the other way um, if we want to, which is quite useful. Uh, again, it's entirely up to you up to you whether you can be asked with this. Um, is it adding anything to your game personally, or is it just an extra complication, an extra setup? Only you can answer that, that question, um, how you want to use it. I think... We were just, in the other video, just starting to look at Wave Echo Cave. Have I said that right? Yes, I have. Not Echo Wave Cave. <laughs> I told you in the other video, I keep saying it wrong. Um, <laughs> Wave Echo Cave. And there's a couple of bits where they can go down and go under um, the rock. So that, for example, could be an area where we could use this kind of thing, just like we've got set up here, um, where the short people can see under it and the tall people are like, well, I can't see under it. Are they got to duck and go under that? So that might just add a nice little touch from that vision point of view. Um, I can't remember what scenes I've got created here. I don't think I've got very many, have I? Uh, I've got to get out of the player's view. Can't see scenes from there. Um, there wasn't anything really in Thunder Tree. Was there anything in this map? Um, probably not, but there there was plenty of places like these walls here. These walls around here, you might define decide to define those as being three foot high, um, because this is an open courtyard in the middle. It's not an enclosed building, um, so you might choose to do that. You could do. Um, this is supposed to be an enclosed building here, but you've got effectively like this wall around it that you might make two foot high or something but to be honest why make it two foot high um it's either a wall or it isn't um yeah I, I suppose the only reason why you would make that two foot high is so that they can see over it um and then turn vaulting off so they can't automatically jump into the sea but to be honest you can do that with a normal wall you could just go here's a normal wall um, and rather than putting any height on, you can just say, well, actually, I'm going to restrict movement, but not restrict light and not restrict sight. So you're not necessarily getting anything from using wall height in, in that situation. Um, you can see I'm thinking on the fly here of just applications for it. Um, but there we go. Anyway, so wall height. Actually, really, really easy to use. Two different scenarios. We can have effectively these tunnels that the characters tall characters can't see under and into um, but short characters can or we've got these taller walls that characters tall characters can see over but short characters can't um, yeah nice i think it's really nice little little module there that could be really really useful just not 100 percent sure where i would use it and um, if I could be asked with it, to be perfectly honest, but I do think Old Al Well is somewhere that could benefit from it, where we've got lots of rubble um, and stuff that might be useful. Uh, if only for the, the, the kicks and giggles that we get when the players of Halflings and things complain that they can't see over the walls. Um, 
you know, it depends on your group. They might find that really amusing and they might really buy into the role play caused by that. Um, or they might not. Anyway, that's it. Fairly quick one, this one. Nice little module, though. Very tasty. See ya.